think that in a lot of ways provides us with, with um, a way to, to start thinking about um, the issue that we're here to talk about tonight, that being um, missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, um, and as a way to start thinking about healthy communities, stronger families, and a way to combat this kind of at the most foundational level on the ground in our communities and in our families, preventing um, the kind of violence that leads to missing and murdered Indigenous women um, at the very root. Can you hear me back there? <laughs> Um, but um, I, I thank you all for your attendance tonight, everybody, men, women, our elders, our friends, and um, my, my Cree name is uh, loosely translated to mean sky dancer, but it's much more in depth than that. In a perfect world, in a physical sphere, all would be in balance and healthy. The earth would be as the creator made it, hence there would be no strife created by the wind, the water, the rock, and the fire. There would be no tornadoes, windstorms, plow winds, tidal waves, mudslides, floods, no forest fires to keep the insects at bay or to encourage a new growth of berries and saplings. There would be no earthquakes and rock slides. Our physicality would not be immersed in drug and alcohol addiction, and we would not be exposed to anorexia, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, AIDS, dementia, PMS, hepatitis, FAS, and more recently, Ebola. We wouldn't have to worry about discriminating someone for their gender preferences or whether or not we'd be sexually and physically violated. Physically, we'd be fit like our grandmothers and grandfathers before us, for they were able to carry their burdens and walk for In miles. a perfect world, our mentality would be rich with our languages, well-versed in the teachings from nature, and certainly competent in animal husbandry. We'd be able to live entirely on and off the land. Hence, our values and morals would be practiced beyond our expectations. People would be so well put together, there'd be no arguments about what to, how to dress, what words to use, and how to behave. And yes, even how to eat. We chew our food slowly, contemplatively, as we would know the hardship of burning the morsels we hunted, gathered, and prepared. Our children, our teenagers, would not suffer from abandonment and neglect, depression, and suicide. They'd have a work ethic, and their play would allow expressing and exploring their creative imagination. They'd be artists, poets, writers, dancers, singers, drummers, hunters, teachers, and they'd grow old. In a perfect world, the emotionality would be so well developed, there'd be no conflicts, no tears, no arguments, no volcanic explosions of anger. We'd be free of put-downs, free from feeling judged, free of guilt and shame. In this perfect world, it would be not, not necessary to update, carry a 30-day or 30-year grudge, we wouldn't have to worry about being alone at night, to be put away for the rest of our lives, or being missing and murdered. We wouldn't have to worry about being talked about, ostracized because you were too beautiful, ugly, handsome, and plain, or simply because you differ in your thoughts and opinions. The zits on your face wouldn't matter. We'd be so well put together, why worry? In a perfect world, achieving perfect spirituality would be the ultimate goal. One would remember to give thanks in utter humbleness and reverence in the morning and at night. We'd all understand that we are all, 
we are gifted with our own guardians, angels, or spirit guides. We all have our traditional names of which we learn how to abide by. We understand our relationship to the grandmothers and grandfathers that reside around, on top, and within the earth. We understand manifestation, transformation, and the need to grow into a fully developed being. We reach our ultimate potential and be self-actualized. Our spirits wouldn't be starving for language, song, and story. Our spirits wouldn't be obsessed and bewitched with ourselves. We'd have a spirituality that would heal our wounds and pull our fragmented self and our communities together. We'd have this lovely and graceful balance between the physical, emotional, mental, all in composition with spirit. Hell, in a perfect world, we'd all have halos surrounding our heads. We must learn how to be compassionate to one another. Compassion involves the relief of the pain of others. Compassion is love and respect in action. I believe this is what walking with our sisters are doing. It is because they love and respect other human beings and would like to see a healthier, functional world without the fear of violence. It is through these imperfections and these unfortunate and evil horrors that motivate and bring about change, not only within a community, but also within ourselves. We can continue to strive and to challenge ourselves and wrestle with hard questions that have been posed and imposed. The striving encourages personal and spiritual growth. One must question and one must find their own answers in their own research.